No great surprise, Marjorie Taylor Greene has slammed the Republican Speaker and slammed what's happened today. Yes, it's quite um, puzzling why Marjorie Taylor Greene has taken such a, so a solid pro-Russian stance on almost every single issue when it comes to the Russia and the United States relationship. And she and the extreme right-wing faction, the Republican Party, is very adamant to make sure that the, the interests of Russia prevail. And I believe there's dual interests. There are interests of Russia and the interests of for Ukraine. There should be negotiation. There should be diplomacy. But it, we have to make sure Ukraine is supported at this point so she wouldn't be in a bad position when she's negotiating. But this war needs to come to an end, and the sooner the better, because so many people are being killed over there on both sides. Oh, absolutely. No no question at all. Uh, what, what do you make of her general stance? It's quite an unsettled time in Washington, isn't it? And that's an understatement. It's definitely an understatement, Tim, because we haven't seen the world in this horrendous condition in many, many decades, and maybe not ever quite like this in the modern era. And there are so many different conflicts going on at the same time taking the attention of President Biden and other people in the federal government to be able to keep everything afloat and not have it spiral out of control. You know, you can really have what Barbara Tuckman instructed us in her beautiful book, a very important one, uh, The Guns of August, I believe, about World War I, that these kinds of wars can start with unintentional consequences, with miscalculation. And what could have happened with Israel and with Iran recently is a good instruction and point that both sides could have overreacted and actually started a conflagration where there was more of a shooting war and their allies had been called into the war and then expanded further into a semi-global conflict. That could easily have happened. So we have to really keep a handle on this and always use diplomacy in addition to strength in order to bring and keep peace. Meanwhile, on the domestic front, Donald Trump's presidential campaign has been delayed, of course, as he appears in court on the hush money criminal trial. And... Um, Look, he's often having a crack at Joe Biden. He calls him Sleepy Joe. It doesn't look like Donald Trump is able to stay awake. He's uh, been found to fall asleep <laughs> a few times. He did, and that was quite uh, hilarious. And it made a lot of social media that he actually dozed off in his own trial, his own hearings of his own trial. But anyway, I, I do believe that this is a really important case, even though it's the first criminal case of any president or former president to be held in the United States. And it's the first of the four criminal charges that he faces. And it has to do, they call it hush money case. It's more than hush money. It has to do with also possibly election interference. I would call it election interference as well. Because the prosecution is charging that President Trump paid this money. First, he falsified, and he had others falsify records and uh, of his business payments to help Stormy Daniel to be quiet, to hush her up, just before the 2016 election when he could have actually lost the election if that story had been public. So to keep her hushed up meant to keep information from the voters, and ensure that a certain number of voters would still vote for him, despite this possible uh, publicity, as well as the uh, Access Hollywood tape, which was also a horrendous tape that pulled a lot of support away from it all at the same time. They are both related to Trump's relationship with women. So it was a very important case that's going on right now. He's not out of the woods yet, and not everyone is innocent until proven guilty, but he's got a big thing on his hands right now. It's the middle of his campaign as well. Yeah, we're in April. Of course, the election's in November. Uh, Donald Trump had a lead, not a significant lead, but it really has tightened, hasn't it? It's a, it's a head bobber. Yes, indeed. He was ahead by a few percentage points nationwide. And then in the swing states, he was also ahead by a few points, which are the most important. The swing states, seven states or so, which determine the election. But here it is. Biden is Joe Biden, the president, has actually tightened up his lead. And it's almost it's a dead heat tie right now on a nationwide polling. But still in a couple of very important swing states like Michigan, President Biden a few points ahead behind Trump. Trump is a few points ahead of Biden in Michigan and in Georgia as well. Those states have to be won by, to be won by Biden in order for him to win the entire election. So we can't just look at the national polling, but the state-by-state -state polling to get a real handle on this.